How's it going? It's been a while since I made a video, but I think that this actually warrants a few minutes of my time and yours for anybody that um, has bought or is planning on buying uh, the Diamondback 380. I bought it a few weeks ago at a gun show for my wife, and it was um, like 170 five dollars or something like that it was way under 200 so I thought okay I didn't do any research on it took my wife down the range we went down there and um, man it was bad it wouldn't shoot two rounds without hanging up um, I thought man I just threw that money down the drain and um, uh, she was having problems racking it and it's a nice looking gun I'm a big fan of 380s you know, they don't have stopping power like a 45 or any of that kind of stuff, but uh, you know, my carry gun's a Glock 26. I can't fault that gun at all. It's uh, never a problem. I have a, a Walther PPKS 380, a beautiful looking gun, but not 100% um, not reliable. For a carry gun, you want 100% reliable. And you know, I bought this because it's very similar to a Glock. You know, the whole makeup, I'm thinking, oh, man, this would be awesome having something like this, you know? It doesn't have a, a, you know, empty magazine automatic lockback or any of that kind of stuff. And, like, that is a thing that you have to uh, get used to, you know? Um, you got to make sure that thing's empty. When you get that click, check it's empty, check it's empty, because you don't want to be... Uh, with a, a round in there and ready to go, you know... Just make sure it's empty. Safety first. All right, so I'm gonna do um, comparison with my 26. Bada boom, spring. And barrel. Now tell me there wasn't some kind of uh, copycat stuff going on there. Um, what Diamondbacks say is the gun needs a break-in uh, period. And um, that was pretty much what it was. Uh, apart from I did a few modifications, minor modifications. I put my clock back. See how dirty they are? Because I did, uh, I put a bunch of rounds. I put 150 uh, through the uh, the diamond back using uh, Tulo, the cheapest crap I could find, Tulo uh, ammo. And uh, I used the uh, SIG ammo. And I used um, a Federal. Uh, and man, I didn't have a single hang up because of these things I did, okay? Let me put the uh, Glock back together. I'm gonna clean these at a later date. You know, just a miniature Glock. Look at that little guy. Look, it's the same thing. Slight difference right there. See that? Huh. Okay. See, very similar. The throat's a bit wider here. Narrow here. Narrow it crazy, but. Um, let me just put my Glock out of the way. It's too much stuff right here on the table. I'm a total amateur, not a gunsmith, any of that kind of stuff, but I'm not really scared to like actually do some basic stuff to a gun. So this is like, you know, basic cleaning stuff. You know, I got your rods and all that kind of stuff. I got a bunch of rifles, you know what I mean? But when we go to the range, I got to, you know, it pays to be a little bit organized because when you have like the, you know, the grocery bag full of all your cleaning stuff and all that, and it doesn't work, man. When you've been at the range and doing a, a lot of shooting, your cleaning needs to be organized. But anyway, yeah, uh, what I did was, see how shiny that is there? It wasn't like that before. I got the Dremel tool with a foam tip, and I put, like, the second to lightest, I think it's the brown stuff. This is stuff I had before. The kit comes with a, a small amount of this. And, um, you know, not full blast. You know, I've never done it before. And I polished all inside the throat, all around here, all the entry points into the, into the barrel. 
because it was hanging up on the wind and I also did down here. I mean, I'm not taking away a lot of material. I'm buffing this thing up. So I went around buffing it all up. I did the barrel. I, uh, I did around the, the entry point right here. I'm just demonstrating right now. I'm not actually doing it. So I did inside the, around the edge of the barrel, inside and all that. Took off the spring, did all around here because this didn't feel smooth at all. This was a hang up deal right here. You know, for that spring to compress, you kind of want it smooth, right? I'm not a gunsmith, just what I'm thinking in my head, you know? And then I put the gun slick down here. This is like some old school stuff. You don't have to use that. I used gun slick. I use it on all my rifles. Um, so I looped up there, in here, polished the barrel, polished that, and I also, because I saw a, where there were increased amounts of wear, let's see what it looks like now, you see that right there, where it's a real shiny, that was black before, there is, that's, you know, where it goes into, through the channel right there, and back here, oh yeah, see that? difference now I buffed that up I put a harder a uh, wheel on there and I just took the edges off of that this is for sliding right and there was quite a bit of friction and now this thing racks like a uh, like snaps easy now so you know these little things that you can do you don't have to be an expert I think they charge like 30 to 40 dollars for polishing the, uh, the throat you can buy the Dremel tool for that and uh, you can do it all yourself, you know. Like, see how dirty it is in here? I mean, I was whacking at some crazy amount of rounds. <laughs> People were looking at me, what's he doing? I was just hitting the target, man. And I was, after I was happy with it, uh, after about 50 rounds, I'm like, no hang ups. And like, then I was going on to accuracy. See, so, you know, accurate was, I mean, uh, eight to 10 yards on target, this little gun. I, uh, uh, it's so light that it's not really um, what I had been thinking for from my wife. Her, she should stick with the revolver. This thing has got a snap to it. I mean, when you want to be a target, you need to be on, holding it, Chris, like right on point, because it's going to go all over the place. You know, but it's a good little gun, performed good. So, you know, get your Dremel tool. Um, clean up these parts, get them all nice and shiny, and uh, I believe I believe that this will work fine for you. Like I said on the on the snap, like racking that first bullet, you need to get the hang of that. Uh, there's no safety, so if you're carrying with a you know loaded chamber, um, you know like pretty. I assume everybody does. I mean, I, to uh, you never know, you know. See how easy that is now. Man, I did a lot of that too beforehand, but I, after 150 rounds, it worked good. My Glock 26. I don't know if it's going to replace it, but for somewhere where I it's a bit bulky and all that kind of stuff. This will go right in the pocket, and the other, I'm pretty confident I'm going to go back, I'm going to do another 150 rounds, I'm going to do a box of hollow points, and if everything goes sweet with that, uh, you know, this is one of the summer days uh, weapons you can like stick in your pocket. Alright, so 150 rounds straight, reliable. The last time I was there, it wouldn't do two rounds at the same time. Um, my th thing about the uh, diamond pack is, yeah, man, I think it's growing on me. I like this gun. Can't wait to go back to the range again and, uh, you know, put through its paces again. And then I'll know that it's good to carry. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. See you later. Oh, much easier. But to, to load that thing, you have to, it's a technique. You gotta do like, 
You gotta snap it. Yeah, I mean that thing is good. It's called going into battery. When you go into battery, it's gonna be like a actually it's gonna be a, a it's gonna be a um, a aggressive. It can be like the Glock. The Glock you can uh, just go like you can like just uh, uh, you see the difference with the with the Glock. Difference with the Glock. It doesn't matter with the Glock. You can do it. You can do it really slow if you want. And there's no friction on the barrel right there. Slight bit of friction on here. See that? That all. Uh, that's all um, important on on uh, getting the bullet in there. I would bet that that's why Glock don't make this type of gun because the tolerances are, are so tight with such a small gun that uh, it's difficult to get this stuff right. Ha 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 ha!